famous escape. This is the story of Robert Bruce, his escapes from personal peril and the heroic escape of Scotland from English rule. The dialogue has been written in modern English. The speech of those times would be unintelligible to modern audiences. The barons would use Norman French among themselves and archaic forms of Saxon English and Gaelic when talking to their retainers. The death of the last direct heir to the Scottish throne had given Edward I, King of England, his opportunity to invade Scotland. For a time, isolated bands of Scots kept up a guerrilla warfare, but with the capture and execution of William Wallace, the struggle seemed over. Our story opens before Bruce has openly defied the English. He and James Douglas have come to the church at Dumfries to meet Sir John Common, with whom they hope to become allies. Common is safe, Robert. He has a long way to ride, today. I don't trust him. Foxy he is by color, and foxy he is by nature. It's not like you to be nervous. A lot hangs on this meeting. If you can persuade the Red Common to recognize your title to the throne of Scotland, there'll be a united Scotland at last. I can't help wondering why Common is so late. The English garrison is only a mile away. Suppose he were to betray our plans to them. What can he betray? I haven't put anything down on paper. Ah, oh, there he is now. Good day, Bruce. Good day, Common. Robert, you're three men with him. Be ready for anything. Yes. We've been expecting you for some time, Common. Robert Bruce. We'll rescue in the name of the king. What king? Edward, king of England and protector of Scotland. I was right, Robert. Treachery. Well, Bruce, do you yield? We are four to two. You need greater odds than two to one when you're hunting Robert the Bruce and the Black Douglas. Up then, men. Come on, men. Back to back, Douglas. Right now. Yes, he's dead. The Red Cullen is dead. You've killed him, Robert. Come on, men. It's all over. Well, that's that, Robert. I saw you out of the corner of my eye. It was a noble thrust. I said, wish it undone. Why? A traitor like that is better dead. The men who got away were warned the English garrison. They'll find out about our plans for the rising. Robert, there's only one thing for it. Yes. The English will be on our tracks in ten minutes. We have to ride for our lives to my own folk in Galloway. There's something we must do first. What? If you go straight to Galloway, you'll be just another fugitive, like William Watt. You'll never be able to rally the whole country to your support. You mean... Yes, Robert. From here we go to school. And at school, you will be crowned King of Scotland. And then let the English see if they can withstand the army. You were rather optimistic that they had done things then. Was I? There's a year gone by since I was crowned at school. The English still haven't captured you? No. But they've chased me all through Scotland like a hunted animal. Cheer <laughs> up, Robert. They've never caught you. Report from the south, Your Majesty. Yes. John of Lorne is advancing on the north with 800 Highlanders. Thank you, Nigel. Warn the other scouts, will you? Yes, Your Majesty. Now, we must decide on our plans quickly. All the sea ports are held by Percy. So we can't get away by sea. McDowell and the Clifford cover the south side of the hill. And on the east, there's John de Boutetour and his archer. And that is, they've got a pen in. North, south, east, and west. Their plan probably is to let the Highlanders drive us into the arms of the others. Yes, yes. I'll warn the men now, James. Give them their orders. Gentlemen, the English are advancing on us at last. That is, those traitors from the Highlands are. We're ready for them, Your Majesty. No, men. There is no use in fighting. There are 800 of them and only 50 of us. We'll kill a few of them before they finish it. If we are killed, the cause of Scottish independence is doomed. It is our duty to preserve our lives. While we live, there is still hope for Scotland. Here, here, for that. We must separate. Each man for himself. But, Your Majesty, won't they concentrate on catching you? I'm dressed just the same as the rest of you. They won't be able to recognize me at 200 yards. Well, men, the plan is this. We wait until they arrive in sight. Then we split up. Let them see us making for the south. Then as soon as each of you is out of sight hidden in the trees or down in the glen, he starts to circle to the north. Once you're through the Highlanders, you'll be safe. We meet at our old hiding place near Pinwerry. Is that clear? Oh, oh there you are. The Highlanders are in sight, and they have bloodhounds with them. Two bloodhounds won't be much use for catching 50 of us. All right, men, be off with you, and good luck. Good, good luck, luck, your men. 
Well, Jane, aren't you going? We haven't been separated this last year, Robert. And I'm going to stay with you now. All right, Jane. Come on. We've got to run for our lives. Come on, Robert. One last effort and we'll shake them off. Here, what's the matter? One, one of their arrows hit me in the leg. It's bleeding badly. Put your arm around my shoulders. I can hear them coming. No, you go on, James. I'll be all right. Leave you here? Certainly not. Look, here's a cave. We'll shelter in it. If they look in the cave, we'll be trapped. I don't think they'll see it. The entrance is very small. Anyway, it's our only chance. Come on, I'll go in, sir. There's not much room inside here, Robert. No. We won't be able to swing our swords if they do find it. It looks as though this is the end of things, James. We've lost every battle we fought. Our men are this person. That's a busy little spider. A spider? A spider way to make me feel sick. I just managed to avoid it as we came in. Now the spider's closing up again. See how she throws the web across? Oh, she's missed. I hear voices, Robert. We were just in time. Just the highlander. Have your thoughts, Eddie. Yes, please. They might be in here. Oh, they can let them in there. They've broken the spider's Go on, then. Robert. We're saved by a spider. And what's more, James? You do notice how determined that spider was. She kept on trying to fix the web, no matter how often it fell down. If that's what you mean, she tried twice. And twice she failed. But she wasn't daunted. And the third time she succeeded. Well, I'm not going to let myself be beaten by a spider, James. I don't care how many times I fail. I'm going to fight on until either I'm dead or Scotland is free. For the next eight years, Ruth struggled on. Gradually, the tide of fortune turned. But there still remained the task of recapturing Castle Sterling. And Castle Sterling was thought to be almost impregnable. James, I want you to take a herald and a flag of truce and ask de Mowbray to come to the wall. Yes, Robert. Tell him that if he surrenders... We'll give him and all his men safe conduct back to England. That's a generous offer, Robert. Sterling Castle is so strong that I doubt whether we can ever capture it by direct attack. All right, Robert. I'll go at once. Sir James Douglas will be the commander of Sterling Castle. I want you to surrender, Sir Mowbray. There's been enough blood built on both sides, Mowbray. If you surrender... You and your men will have safe conduct back to England. I'll strike a bargain with you, de Mowbray. If we agree not to attack you in the meantime, will you agree to surrender if you haven't been relieved by next midsummer? See, Mowbray, and I have an inspiration. What? Mowbray will surrender if he hasn't been relieved by next midsummer. And in the meantime, we're not to attack him. James, you're insane. That's the most insulting kind of challenge for the English. They'll gather such a relief army as we'll have no hope of withstanding. We'll have to fight the whole might of England sooner or later, Robert. And this is our best chance. Why? The further we fight them from their base, the better chance we'll have. Normally, we'd have to meet them in the lowlands, where their cavalry would have every advantage. But if they come right up north to Sterling, the advantage will be ours. Then you're right. And now what we've got to do is to muster the strongest army that Scotland can produce. There's the English army, Robert. I've been waiting ten years for a chance like this, Jim. We camped in a strong position for the night. It looks strong. It is strong. We can only attack them on one side. The force makes one side of a triangle, and the bannock the other. And in front... It's a very strong defensive position. And in the morning, they'll come out of it to attack us. No, they won't, James. We've let the English take the offensive for too long. You mean we're going to attack them? We'll attack them tomorrow as soon as it's light. And their position is not strong for defense. The front is so narrow that they can't form up properly. And they haven't room to maneuver inside that triangle. If we can only push them back a few hundred yards, we'll drive them into the banner flood. We can do that. For the frontal attack on their archers. Our cavalry will charge the archers in the flank. So that only a quarter of their arrows will be able to take effect. James, the English have been delivered into our hands. The rest is 
history. Robert Bruce's plans were carried out exactly as he described them to Douglas. And in the Battle of Bannockburn, the English suffered one of the most severe defeats that has ever fallen to the lot of an English army. The war still dragged on for a few years, but after Bannockburn, it was apparent that there could be only one end. Eventually, peace was made, and England recognized the independence of Scotland. Bruce ascended the throne, one of the greatest kings that any country has ever known. Thank you.